Hello and welcome back. We are learning FSX and we are understanding all the four options of FSX. Out of four, we already discussed about two options and these options are like uh, FSX, NetApp on tap and ZFS. We understood the use case of this, right? And now we are going to discuss about Windows file server. You know, Windows is one of the most popular service and in many networks, they are actually using Windows as a native operating system. Now, if you want storage, which is actually supported by native Windows operating system, then you can use FSX for Windows file server. Now, what is the use case? How we are going to use this? Let's understand this using this particular scenario. Okay. I'm giving you one very basic example that I have, suppose I have four Windows system. Now I am generating data in this particular four system. Now I have two options. The first option is I am going to store data into the local system. Now suppose if I am going to store data into the local system, what are the drawbacks? The first drawback we have is that we have to take care about all four hard drives. Why? Because if anything happens to any of the computer's hard drive, I'm going to lose this data. Right? And you know that the value of the data. So, I have to take care about four hard disks. The second problem we have is, we have to take backup of all these four systems. Now, if we have four systems, that it is okay, we can take a backup of this. But let's, let's imagine that if we have 40 systems, then it is actually problem for, for system administrator to take a backup of 40 systems every day. Now, we are not going to use this scenario, right? So in this case, what is the idea over here? We will create one server. Okay. And we can, we'll connect them, connect that particular server with the network like a normal computer. Now, in this server, we are going to, it can be a VM or physical machine. Let's say that it is a VM, right? Then we will install Windows operating system. Then we will configure SMB protocol over here. SMB stands for server message block. And using this SMB, we can store data in this computer on a central location. Once you configure this server as SMB server, in Windows, we call it file server. Now, we will store our data on this file servers. So all these four computers going to store data over here in this particular storage system. Of course, they are going to use Microsoft native storage protocol. We call it SMB. Using the protocol SMB, they are going to store data in this particular server. And now we have centralized storage system. In native Microsoft environment, this particular scenario is very popular. But if we are going to set up this kind of scenario on premises, we have to face some challenges over here. For example, first of all, you have to take care about high availability of your file server, right? Suppose you are storing all your data on a centralized location and imagine that if you don't have your server available for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, all your work will be in the post mode. Why? Because you don't have storage available. So we have to take care about high availability. Here we have to take care about the operating system as well. We have to update our operating system regularly and it is our responsibility. We have to update antivirus as well because here we are managing our own file server. Then we have to set up and configure SMB server. So this is like the first challenge that we are facing when we have our own premises file server. We have to take care about VMI availability. We have to take care about operating system updates. The second challenge we have is we have to manage scalability of this server as well. 
For example, let's say that I have four computer right now, but in the future, this number is growing and it can be 40. Now 40 computers are actually storing data on my centralized file server. In this case, I have to increase storage capacity. Right now, suppose it is a 1 TB, I have to make it like 16 TB. As multiple computers simultaneously storing data over here in this server, I have to increase capacity of the network as well. I have to increase network bandwidth as well. Right? So managing this kind of storage server on premises, it's very difficult. But now you do not need to manage this. Why? Because now we have FSX. In the FSX, you are going to get same Windows SMB server, Windows native storage system in the umbrella of FSX. Now, when you are going to the FSX, okay, this service will be managed service. What is the advantage of this? If this service is managed service, we don't care about VM. We do not need to create VM. We don't care about operating system. Of course, it is a Windows operating system, but we are not going to manage this, right? All we need to configure is SMB and then our server or our storage is ready and we can store data from multiple servers or multiple Windows system. Now, suppose if you have 60 system right now and if you want to increase capacity of this, you can also increase this. You have highest level of terabyte scale storage. So, increasing storage capacity, network bandwidth, everything is possible because FSX is specifically for storage services. Now, we want to understand this particular scenario practically. We want to set up FSX for Windows. We want to connect our Windows system with the FSX and we want that these computers are going to store data over here in this particular FSX Windows storage. We want to understand all this practically. You can connect your EC2 instances with FSX for Windows storage. You can connect your ECS containers. You can connect your Kubernetes containers over here. Even if you have own premises server, you can connect them with cloud-based FSX Windows file server as well. But to set up all this, Windows operating system is heavily dependent on Active Directory. To set up this kind of scenario, you must have knowledge of Active Directory. Now, I know that if you have system administration background, you may have idea about this, but there are many people who don't know about Active Directory. And if you are going to set up this scenario without knowledge of Active Directory, you will be in trouble. So, what we have decided in the next video, we are going to discuss about Active Directory. And, and it is very useful because Active Directory is one of the most best product or a flagship product of Microsoft. So, it is one kind of best identity source. So, if you have knowledge of Active Directory anyway, it will be useful for you and it, it will also help you to understand the concept of FSX for Windows File Server. So, here we discuss about FSX for Windows File Server. In the next video, we are going to discuss about Active Directory and from next to next video, we are going to understand whole concept practically because when you see this practically, you will get clear understanding about topic and you will never forget this, right? And you can pass any AWS exam or interview. So, be with us. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.